Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I haven't done a video like this in a while, and what I mean by like this is a tutorial style video. So today we're going to be looking at player object interaction. We've already looked at this before on the channel, but today I'm going to show a method which is 100 times easier in every way. It uses Unity events, which is actually the exact same way that UI buttons work in Unity. However, we're going to be applying it to game objects which we can interact with instead physically in a 3D space. This method also works for 2D, however we're doing it for 3D just to show that it can be used in a wide variety of scenarios. So already, like I had before, I have a little player control which we can walk around, you know, there's a tank, or not a tank, or, you know, it's a thing, and we've got two crates. So we want to be able to interact with these crates and for now we're just going to make it show a message which says that we interacted with them. So let's go ahead and get this all sorted. Let's create a public, uh, oh sorry, uh, sorry, a <laughs> player action script. Uh, let's call it player actions. Let's double click to open this up in Visual Studio. And let's go ahead and remove these. Now, before we get into the coding, I have a game which I have been developing for the past four months. It's on Steam. It's named, it's called Polly. It is a roguelike bullet hell. Uh, if you guys like the sound of that, check it out. Link is in the description. Go wishlist it. It's not fully released yet. Or if you want to try it, it's about five US dollars. So, uh, awesome. But if not, just keep watching the video. <laughs> anyway. Let's remove both methods and let's create a public transform uh, for the player cam. And this will be where the raycast comes out of because we're still going to be using raycasts to actually interact with the objects. And speaking of interaction, let's quickly make a interaction script just so we can uh, add that into our player actions without it throwing us an error and being annoying. So let's just call this interaction. Uh, let's go ahead and make a public float called interaction distance and actually for uh, good practice we set these as private and we actually serialize the field instead just so then if we're accessing the class from another thing it doesn't uh, throw an error because these shouldn't really be accessed by other scripts maybe interaction distance but player camera shouldn't really change Cool, now let's go ahead and update, let's create a public void called uh, handle interaction, because maybe on a player actions class you might want it to handle other things such as opening up an inventory, or uh, I don't know, eating food or something like that, so um, we're just going to create a method to handle that instead, because if we overload our update with you know hundreds of lines of code it could get messy. So let's go ahead and handle interaction. So we, we want to check if we are clicking the F key, right? But let's say the interaction key is F. So if input get key down E code dot F. And just to prevent nesting a shitload of if statements, let's actually uh, invert this. So if we're not click uh, clicking F, we can return out of this. Uh, let's just go ahead and debug.log uh, started interaction just so we can debug to make sure it's all working um, but we'll handle that in a second and let's go ahead and set up a raycast so let's go raycast hit uh, call it hit uh, and then we can physics dot raycast and here uh, we're it's gonna take in a origin point a direction a distance and a layer mask we're not going to really worry about the layer mask we just need the first three now we can set the origin point uh to be the player camera dot position uh and we can set the direction to be the player camera dot forwards vector because we want it to be directly out in front of the player camera so then it's wherever we're looking and then we can input the max distance luckily we, we set the interaction distance and you know what, let's quickly set these up here so then they appear in the inspector easier. So let's set the interaction distance something like 5. Awesome. And then we can also out the head. I believe it's origin point, direction, it can be out hit, distance. 
Yeah. Haven't done this in a while, so that's that feels good that I remember it. <laughs> uh, so we can check if the hit dot collide is equal to null, then we return. Uh, alternatively, instead of collider, we go transform, because that that's what we're looking for. Or to make sure it's game object. Can we do game object from that? Oh, we can't. So transform will work just fine. So we're checking if it's a game object. Uh, if it's not, we return. Uh, then also, if it does not contain the interaction script, then we can also return. Uh, and you know what? Just to keep this code a little bit less, we can actually uh, turn these into inline if statements. Just because we can. Because we're only returning out of them, so it doesn't really make sense for them to be super long. Uh, and just wasting our document space. Awesome. Uh, and we can also check if hit.transform.getComponent interaction is equal equal to null, then we can return as well. It's really interesting to see how my coding style changes and how I learn more over the course. Like, the, the way I did the interaction video a year ago is actually completely different to how I do it now, and this way is actually a lot more simple if you actually follow it correctly. Um, so, then we can simply interact with it. Now, we are going to leave this for a second, um, and we can return to our scene and open up the player action, no, sorry, the interaction class, uh, and let's create a few variables. So let's remove those. Let's create a public uh, void called interact. Uh, and this is how we will interact. So going back to our player actions, uh, let's go ahead and just call uh, hit.transform.interact.getComponent interaction dot interact. Boom. Oh, anyway, now we can remove this. And that is all our player actions code done for now. Uh, so maybe you'll want to do some other things in the player actions, which is again why we created the handle interaction as a separate uh, method so it doesn't get clogged. Also, just to keep it sorted out in case you have other things in your player actions class, let's go ahead and call this uh, object interaction. These uh, variables right here with a header. Awesome. Uh, Inside our interaction class, let's go ahead and set up some events, and this is really how simple it is at this point. We can go public, and here we can go unity event, uh, and we can go on interact, and that's what we need to do. We need to go on interact, dot invoke, and if there's nothing, then we don't need to invoke it, so let's just put a question mark there. So if it's not, if there's nothing on the interact event, we won't evoke it. And that is how simple it is, guys. We can call act, we can call functions now, as we please. Play actions. Let's set this up. Main camera. Interaction di distance of five. Boom. Let's rename these to crates. Let's add the interaction class. And you know what? Let's just make these disappear real quick. As you can see, on interact, boom, add. Let's make the tank disappear. Game object, set active. You know how the stuff works, guys. It's as easy as <laughs> just the uh, basic UI button. Uh, let's go ahead to make this a little bit easier so we can see. Let's add an image around the center. Make it like 2 by 2 Yep, so we now have a, have a nice uh, thing in the center. Boom. It's as easy as that, guys. Uh, just to show what else you could do if you, let's say you wanted to call a method on a script, right? So let's say you had a, a, an object which adds an item to your inventory. Easy. Let's go ahead and make that. Let's visualize a inventory. So let's call it this. And let's say we uh, have a public uh, void add item to inventory. Obviously, it would look a little bit different, a lot different to this actually. But we had a string for the item name uh, debug.log added. 
Item name. Do inventory. Alright, let's check. Instead, we want to save these in inventory on the player, because that makes sense. And, oh. It did not compile properly. Welcome to Unity 2023, folks. Almost 2024. Kind of crazy, actually. Anyway. Add the player. Inventory. Add item. Let's add the uh, tank. <laughs> oh, good bullets. Uh, we go here. Play. Uh, and as you can see, down in the bottom, added bullets to inventory. It's as easy as this, and you can control pretty much everything with this. Uh, so, if you guys like the video, subs subscribe. Uh, join the Discord in the description if you like helping other people with code problems. There are often people asking for help with code, and yeah. Also, if you need help with code, uh, link's in the description. Anyway, guys, have a great day, and I'll see you next time, probably in a devlog for my game. Uh, I just decided to do one of these videos, because I haven't done it in a while, and I got a new way to interact with objects, which I found out. So, anyway, guys, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.